I'm in a relationship with life. Just life. You know, I look outside my window and it is fall out here and it is a gloomy day here in Indiana, but you know what? I am in relationship with love and light and peace and joy because if I'm feeling gloomy, which we all do, we're human, I know and I can remember this day and then I'll know that the sunshine's gonna come behind it. I am ordering up life and abundance and health and all good things that are purpose for me because I know all the good and perfect things come from above and from within, from within without. And that is what I am ordering up. Challenges like the past does not define us, but they actually refine us. And I'm going to share the story I shared on Facebook. At 6,643 feet, Klingman's Dome Summit is the highest point in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in the United States. I had been there two other times and I never got past the parking lot. I had a lot of excuses why I could not climb it. It was too hot. I can't breathe due to high alt altitude. My legs are strong enough. Lots of excuses. Something happened the third time. Something shifted in me. I looked up the path and I knew that all I needed to do was to take one step. Just one step. I took a step, then another, then another. I got winded, I got tired. My mind kept telling me that this was a long way, but my soul told me to take the next step. And I made it. This is what I'd like to say. The moral of my story is, whatever you want to do, don't worry about how long the path is. Just take one step. And before you know it, you have climbed the mountain. Here's the challenge. Let me give it to you in a philosophical phrase. I tend to be a little philosophical. Here it is. The things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. That's the difference between success and failure. Let other people lead small lives, but not you. Let everybody else cry over small hurts, but not you. Let everybody else argue over non-essentials, but not you. Deal in things that matter. Make sure what you do is the product of your own conclusion. Take advice, but not orders. Let everybody around you be helpful, but then put that through your own mental computer and make sure what you do is the product of what you've concluded based on all the input. All of us should be students of inevitability. Without kidding myself, if I keep up my current daily practices, where will it take me in 10 years without being disillusioned? I don't want to just cross my fingers and walk the wrong road. I got to learn to look into the future called inevitable. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that script, live a totally different way the next five years. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years and jot this down? No. No, you don't have to live the second six years like the first six. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six. Now, here's the next note to make. Five years from now, you will arrive. The question is where? This is for mature people now. If you keep up your present disciplines and keep up the present pace that you're on, where will you be in five years? Boy, it's easy to say, hey, I haven't really thought about that. So now make this note, in five years, here's the probability. You will either arrive at a well-designed destination or an undesigned destination. Well-designed or undesigned. And I promise you, five years from now, you, you really don't want to arrive at an undesigned destination. Because you may very well wind up wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, living where you don't want to live, maybe doing what you don't want to do, simply because you didn't design a better destination. Five years from now, I wish for you to arrive at a well-designed place, a place of productivity, a place that'll make you feel good about yourself, a place that'll give you honor and respect, a place that'll give you influence to touch other people five years from now that you couldn't do today. Where will you be in five years? The first thing you start changing is what? Your philosophy. You start changing your mind. You start changing how you think. You start picking up new ideas and information. 
gather new knowledge, make better decisions about what's valuable. And I'm telling you, if you'll do that, your whole life will change. Your health will change. Your relationship with your family will change. Your ability to cope with challenges and problems will change. I'm telling you, income, promotions, all of it will change. If you will change, it'll all change. If you won't change, it isn't going to change. You can keep your fingers crossed if you want to and hope they'll straighten it out. You can wish for the wind not to blow quite as severe, but I'm telling you, wishing for the wind to change in your favor, I mean, we call naive at best. Don't do this any longer. Wish for a better wind. The key is to wish for the wisdom to set a better sail. Utilize whatever wind that blows to take you wherever you want to go. That is the philosophy I picked up at age 25, and it revolutionized my whole life. And here's what I found. I found it was easy. I got rich by the time I was 31, and it was easy. Now, here's my definition of easy. Got to jot this down. My definition of easy, meaning something I could do. I figure if it's something you can do, it's easy. Now, here's a parenthesis. Parenthesis. I worked hard at it. I found something I could do, which was easy, but I worked hard at it. I got up early and stayed up late, worked hard that six years. But what I did was easy, meaning it was something I could do. You say, well, Mr. Ron, if it was so easy, how come everybody else around you during that six years, how come they didn't get rich? Here's why. It's easy not to. How else would you describe it? That's it. You say, no, no. For all of the rest of them, it was hard for them and it was easy for you. That's not true. You couldn't debate me on that in front of this intelligent audience. But here's the challenge. Let me give it to you in a philosophical phrase. I tend to be a little philosophical. Here it is. The things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. That's the difference between success and failure. So you've got the choice here today of one of two easies. Easy to or what? Easy not to. I can give you in one sentence how I got rich by the time I was 31. Here it is in one sentence. I did not neglect to do the easy things I could do every day for six years. Underline. I did not neglect. That's the key. I found something easy I could do that led to fortune and I did not neglect to do it. Major reason for not having everything you want in America. Major reason for not having more of what you want in America. More health, more money, more power, more influence, more everything. Major reason why you don't get it. Simple answer. Neglect. Neglect. And here's the problem with neglect. It starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And here's what else is the problem. One neglect leads to another. Neglect to do wise things with your money, you'll probably neglect to do wise things with your time. Neglect to do wise things with your time, you'll probably neglect to do wise things with your business. One leads to another leads to another. Pretty soon, neglect has you by the throat, emptying your purse, emptying your heart, emptying all of your chances for equities and power and all the good things. Neglect. What if you should be walking around the block every day for your good health and you don't? I'm telling you, you're on the wrong track. You should do it. You could do it. You don't do it. That's called formula for disaster. All you've got to do is let that and a few other things accumulate for six years, and now you're driving what you don't want to drive, wearing what you don't want to wear, living where you don't want to live, doing what you don't want to do, maybe having become what you really didn't want to become. I'm telling you, that's it. Just neglect along, drift along, and it's got you by the throat. It'll take all your values, leave you with just a little bit of dust in a summer wind, and it'll soon be gone. I hope I said that well. That's it. It's where I found myself at age 25 until my teacher came along and said, Mr. Owen, up till now you've messed up. Let's see if we can't clean that up, change it all. I did. Change my life. Not just the money, all the rest of the values that came pouring in when I understood that it was me. It was me. We intend to when the idea strikes us. We intend to when the emotion is high. But now if you don't translate that into action fairly soon, now the intent starts to diminish, diminish, diminish. And a month from now, it's cold. A year from now, it can't be found. So act, set up a discipline when the emotions are high and the idea is strong, and clear and powerful. That's the time to set up the discipline. Somebody talks about good health and you're stirred. Right, you need to get a book on nutrition. Get the book before the idea passes and before the emotion gets cold. Go for the book, start the library, start the process, fall on the floor, do some pushing. Action, got to take action. Otherwise, the wisdom is wasted. Otherwise, the emotion soon passes. Unless you put it into a disciplined activity, capture. Disciplines is called how to capture the emotion and how to capture the wisdom and translate it into equity. Now, here's what's important about discipline. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. 
Don't be naive in saying, well, this doesn't matter. I'm telling you everything matters. There are some things that matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. We all pity the man who says, well, this is the only place I let down. Not true. Key to take home. Every letdown affects the rest of your performance. Every letdown affects the rest. This is part of the educational process on personal development. If you don't take the walk around the block, you probably won't do the apple a day. If you don't do the apple a day, you probably won't consist, you know, start building your library. If you don't build your library, you probably won't keep a journal and you won't take pictures and you won't do this, and won't do wise things with your money, won't do wise things with your time, won't do wise things with your possibilities and relationships. And the first thing you know, six years of that accumulated and we say you have messed up. So the whole key to reversing that process now is to start picking up these disciplines. Now here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest of your disciplines. Every new one affects the rest. That's why action is so important. The least action, the smallest action. Take it, because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return from that one action, it'll inspire you to do the next one and the next one and the next one. You start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to get an apple. Get an apple, it'll inspire you to get a book. Get a book, it'll inspire you to get a journal. Get a journal, it'll inspire you to grow, develop some skills. All disciplines affect each other. Every lack affects the rest. Every new affects the rest. The key is to diminish the lack and set up the new. And you've started a whole new life process. Also. One more thought on discipline. Here's the greatest value of discipline. Self-worth, self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to discipline. The least lack of discipline, and it starts to erode our psyche. One of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit. The slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode the psyche. Instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best, sure enough. You say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No, it's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've begun in the slightest way to affect your own philosophy. Here's the problem with the least neglect. Neglect starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. One neglect leads to another. And the worst of all, when neglect starts, it diminishes our self-worth, our self-confidence. You say, well, how can I get back my self-respect? Tell you, you don't have to go to 29 classes. All you have to do is start the smallest discipline that now corresponds to your own philosophy. Like I should, and I could, and I will. No longer will I let neglect stack up on me so that I will have the sorry scenario six years from now, giving some excuse instead of celebrating my progress.